The next section will discuss the main types of geotechnical failures that occur in open cut coal mines. In excavated slopes, these include planar, wedge, toppling, and composite failures. In dumped material, these include active passive wedge failures. Failures that may occur in both excavated and dumped slopes include circular failures and isolated rock fall failures. Planar failure. These types of failures occur where a block of rock slides along a single defect that dips and daylights in the excavated face. Wedge failure. Wedge failure occurs where two continuous planar defects intersect and daylight in the excavated face. Toppling failure. Toppling failure occurs when persistent defects dip steeply into the excavated slope and the blocks or columns formed topple out of the face. These failures generally have a weak layer at the base that the vertical blocks slide along. Composite failures. These are typically the most common type of failure in excavated coal mine slopes. Composite failures involve a combination of planar, wedge and toppling failure modes along persistent defects and also some component of rock mass fracturing and failure. Typical composite failures are vertically to subvertically bound by structural defects and horizontally bound by a weak, generally carbonaceous layer. Such failures occur at both the individual bench scale or as a failure of the overall pit slope. Active passive wedge failures. These type of failures occur in dumped slopes, particularly where the dump is formed on a weak and or steeply dipping floor. Circular failures. Circular failures occur in highly weathered, soil-like or dumped material that contains little to no large rock fragments. Circular failures may be deep-seated or may occur near the surface where they are referred to as skin slippage failures. Circular failures typically result from an excavated or dumped slope that is greater than the angle of repose through undercutting or over-steepening mining practices. Isolated rock falls. These are failures in which individual rocks fall out of a dumped or excavated slope face. Isolated rock falls can be just as hazardous as failures involving a whole slope face. They generally occur after heavy rain events where poor separation of dumped material has occurred or where blasting has been poorly executed and the face not adequately scaled for loose rocks at the time of mining. Once a geotechnical hazard has been identified, an inspection will be completed as per site requirements. Controls will then be put in place to effectively manage the hazard. Controls must be followed at all times. If you observe conditions to change from those documented in the site hazard report, notify your supervisor immediately. Typical controls to manage geotechnical hazards using the hierarchy system include elimination controls, scaling or chaining of slope faces and crests to remove loose rocks, trim blasting to remove unstable ground, redesign or engineering controls, altering the blast design, such as changing from a hard wall to a soft wall, installing temporary buttresses, reviewing and redesigning the mine plan, such as incorporating additional benches into both excavated and dumped slopes. Only allowing equipment with falling object protection installed to work within the hazard zone. Separation or isolation controls. Controlling access at the crest or toe of the identified hazard by installing hard barriers. Restricting to single lane access past the hazard. Limiting equipment used in the hazard zone, such as allowing the excavator arm and bucket only inside the hazard zone or modifying or restricting the dragline dig sequence to minimise exposure to the hazard. Regrading or re-establishing tip heads. Rectifying drainage conditions, including installing pumps and grading slopes away from the crest into a sump. Administration controls. Increasing the frequency of inspections. Allowing only experienced operators within the hazard zone 
completing additional risk assessments for specific mining sequences, such as mining on retreat or backfilling after mining coal. Establishing monitoring controls, such as peg telltales, wireline extensometers, prisms, LIDAR or slope monitoring radars. Restricting operations to daylight hours only or installing additional lighting. The number and nature of controls is governed by the consequence and likelihood of a slope failure occurring. Slope monitoring and implementation of standoff zones are two of the most commonly applied and effective controls if managed correctly. Slope monitoring is completed by one or more of the following methods. Visual inspections, peg telltales, wireline extensometers, prism monitoring, laser scanners, drone surveys, LIDAR or slope monitoring radars. Monitoring devices can be used for either long-term, broad-scale detection of slope movement or targeted monitoring of a specific area of concern. Regardless of the monitoring device implemented, it is important to remember the following. Monitoring devices deployed should be able to measure the direction and magnitude of slope movement. Monitoring backsight devices need to be mounted on stable ground, otherwise false or misleading measurements can be recorded. Monitoring equipment needs to be regularly inspected and serviced to ensure it is operating as required. Trigger or alarm levels need to be predefined and should be set at levels specific to site conditions. Standoff distances can be applied at both the crests and toes of excavated or dumped slopes. Standoff zones are typically based on empirical charts, past performance of slopes with similar conditions, or modelling results from software simulating individual rock falls or slope failures. The applied standoff distance should be appropriate for the type, size, likelihood and consequence of slope failure. Many sites have standard restriction zones that are applicable at all times. Increases or decreases to these standard restriction zones are then made on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the specific hazards present.